Please understand you're performing this repair at your own risk. We cannot be held responsible for any injuries or damage done to your device while attempting a repair. To complete this repair, we're going to need a small torque screwdriver, small flathead screwdriver, in addition to one or two case opener tools. Our first step is to open up the iPod. And we're going to wedge our case opener tool in between the front and back housing. It'll help if you press on the back in the center, not too hard, but just enough so that it brings the rear casing slightly away from the front, allowing us to wedge our tool in there. You can then release the clips by prying down and out along the right side of the casing. Once we've freed the clips on this half of the iPod, we'll be free to set it face down, and then we can open the case up to the right. Now be careful, because the headphone jack and hold switch assembly is still plugged into the logic board, and there's also adhesive holding the bend and the cable together. Our next step will be to remove the hard drive. So we're going to have to bend the cable up slightly at the top so we can grab a hold of the cable and pull the drive downwards. Be careful not to bend any of the small pins on the hard drive cable while removing the drive. We'll now go ahead and unplug the cable leading to the headphone jack and hold switch assembly so that we can separate the back and front housing. Now remove the black piece of tape covering the hard drive cable which will also expose the screw we need to remove later on. The LCD screen is located beneath the logic board. In order to remove the logic board, we'll have to unscrew six torque screws. Before we can remove the logic board, we're going to have to unplug a cable leading to the click wheel. And to do this, we'll release the tension in the port by flipping this black tab in the vertical direction. We'll go ahead and do the same for the LCD screen port, which we'll be removing shortly. Before we can lift out the logic board, we're going to want to slide the cable leading to the click wheel out from its port. Now we'll carefully lift out the logic board to the right and we can pull the LCD screen out with it. And now we're free to unplug the LCD screen from the board. Next we can plug our replacement into the port as shown here. We'll then flip the black tab back down. We can now put the logic board and LCD screen back into its place. Plugging the click wheel cable back into the logic board is tricky because of its small size. There isn't much play in this cable, so be careful not to tear it while plugging it back into its port. It's now time to reinsert the six torque screws holding the logic board in place. We can now reapply the black piece of tape covering the hard drive cable. We're now ready to carefully plug the hard drive back into the hard drive cable. We can use the black plastic tab seen on the right hand side of the hard drive cable as a guide for matching up the pins with the drive. Next, plug the cable leading to the headphone jack and hold switch assembly back into its port on the logic board. Now plug the battery back into the logic board port. We'll now close up the iPod by applying pressure on all sides and making sure the front and rear housings are flush. Find all the parts and tools necessary to complete this repair at our website. Thanks for watching.